Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Naomi. Uh, we have been on a break, but now we're back. Uh, in this unit today, we're going to tackle structures. Structures is a unit in quantity survey, which is also in civil engineering. Uh, students have been having a problem in this unit because it has a lot of calculation and they want us really to discuss it so that I can be able to take you through it and so that you can prepare for your exams. If you're new to this channel, feel welcome. Uh, if you're coming back, uh, Karibu Sana, welcome so much. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe so that you can continue making content for you. So in today's class, we are going to discuss stress and strain. Stress and strain. You realize that in buildings, when buildings are constructed, uh, the strength that is in buildings uh, is usually determined by the structural engineer. The structural engineer determines what type of reinforcement to use, how many columns, what is the size of the beams, what are the types of materials to be used. So he prepares the structural drawings. So uh, when the structural engineer prepares the structural drawings, he uses the architectural drawings that are prepared by the architect. After the architect is done designing the shape, the sizes of the rooms, how the, the house will look, uh, the aesthetics, how beautiful it will be, he gives the drawing to the structural engineer. The structural engineer is the one who is responsible for designing the strength of the building. The architect doesn't have to know about the specific sizes of the bars to be used in the columns. He doesn't have to know about the number of columns to be used in the building. The one who is uh, responsible for determining all the aspects of strength in a building is called the structural engineer. And because of the structural engineer, the fact that we are dealing with things about the structure of the building, that is why this unit is called structures. We are going to be discussing about the strength of a building. Uh, the unit structures is also called strength of materials. This is a unit in both building, construction, and also in automotive engineering, whereby all these, uh, in, this, in both courses, we need to know the strength of the materials that we are using. So, the first thing that we shall discuss is, in this unit is about stress and strain. And we are going to discuss and know what is stress, what is strain, how they affect the strength of the building, and why are they important. So, the first thing that we look, look at is the stress. Number one. It is stress. So what is stress? Stress, it is the internal resistance of a body to the distorting effects of the external force. Whenever we have a body, for example, you can have a body like a column in buildings. You see a column, uh -huh. we have a column here, it's a rectangular column. Whenever we have this column, the column usually carries the load above here. Then, for example, we have a story building. The story building uh -huh, was like this. We have, the, we have a floor here. Uh -huh, this is one floor. Then we have another floor here. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, this, is a, this is a building. So uh, the columns will be situated like here. Here we have a column. Here we have a column. We have a column here. And we could even have another column here and another column here. Now, these columns usually carry the load downwards. For example, this floor, its weight is usually carried by the columns down here to the foundation. Uh, the roof of this building uh, will have its weight distributed to the columns, then the columns to the slab, then the slabs to the columns again until it goes down to the foundation. So, uh, whenever we have a column, the load is usually on top. It usually distributes the load above to the foundation. So, uh, when the load is placed on this column, the load is on top here. So, uh, whenever the load is acting on the column, that load we usually calculate it as force. We call that load that is coming down here force. 
force it is that load that is on top of the column what is force force is calculated as the weight of the load we multiply by the gravity you know everything that exists and has weight is usually acted upon by gravity for example if we have a, a pen here then we release it it will fall down because of gravity all of us are usually acted upon by gravity so there's a force that acts against nature and it acts downwards is called gravity so whenever we are calculating force we will take the weight of any object then we multiply by the gravity when the force acts on the body uh -huh, when it acts on this cross section this is an area where the force acts on this area when we take force over the area we will get stress we have started by defining stress as the uh, internal resistance of a body towards the to, towards the external to the uh -huh. sorry uh, stress is the internal resistance of a body to the distorting effects of an external force whenever we have this body and there are forces acting against this body this force is trying to compress this body as long as it's acting downwards whenever uh, this column cannot be compressed by this force we shall say that the force has another resulting force that is you know every force has a resultant force every action has a reaction so whenever we push like this body whenever we push it we are applying force on the wall that wall so that it doesn't move it has to be having some resistance that resistance towards this force because it's trying to change the shape of this body it's called stress stress in other words it is the strength because uh, whenever there is a force trying to distort a body it's trying to change its shape or to change its size then that body has some resistance that resistance is called stress so stress in buildings is a good thing i'll give an example we have this pillow uh, when we have this pillow we could have some forces acting on top of this pillow uh, assume this is a column this is a column there is another floor placed on the column and it's applying force on the column the normal thing we expect is the column should be compressed but now the column will not be compressed because just imagine you you went up a building then you realize that the column is becoming compressed it's reducing in in size don't you think that you would be worried of course you would be worried so every building should have strong columns and the strength of that column is usually determined by that resistance to that force acting on it so stress is the internal resistance of a body towards the uh, distorting effects of an external force and it's usually calculated as force over area and this area is the cross-section area so stress is usually denoted by this symbol stress is denoted by this symbol and we have said stress is the internal resistance of a body towards the distorting effects of an external force so every object every uh it's every element in a building should have stress so that whenever force is acting on it it does not become distorted all right there's another term that we call strain what is strain strain is the measure of distortion of an object whenever we have an object for example uh, we have this hair bud this hair bud is on a normal day the hair bud is on this size then we have as uh, forces that are pulling the hair bud these are tension forces we acting on the hair bud you see the hair bud changes in size it becomes longer that change in size in length is called strain that measure of deformation you see the hair bud was this size but once we pulled it it deformed deformation is the change in size so what is strain strain is the measure of deformation of an object it was this way normally then it was pulled 
all right then we have the, this pillow it was this size normally then compression forces acted on it so it is reduced in size so when you are calculating when you are calculating strain we shall say strain is the uh, measure of deformation of any material so we could have an object of this size this is the normal length then it changes due to uh, action of tensile forces you see now it has become this long uh, the, the, it has changed length here there is change in length and here there is change in length this was the normal length when you are calculating strain strain is always equals to change in length over the orig original length all right so strain is the measure of deformation of a material so whenever there is force like this column whenever there are forces acting on this column we expect there shall be some strain resulting this column usually deforms but uh, the issue is whenever we go up the buildings for example uh, we have a five-story building at night when and we assume that this building is made of classes uh, when we are in class during the day then we assume all the rooms are occupied by students we expect that the, room, the, the building is of the same size with when it is at night and no one is in the building you know that is our expectation because we never see the building change in size but the fact is the building when it is occupied is usually under some pressure and it changes in size and like when the building is empty all right it's just that the change in size for example on the columns whenever a force the force acts on the column the column usually reduce in length in the height but the issue is the change in height should be a bit should be very small it is you cannot see it using your normal eyes but it is usually there but when the structural engineer is designing he cannot assume that the column doesn't change the fact is the column will reduce in size but it should not uh, ex the change in length should not exceed a, a certain point where it breaks all right we will see this as we continue what i am trying to explain so uh, we have been able to cover stress and strain we have said stress is the internal resistance of a material to the distorting effects of the external forces and we have said any body is usually acted upon by forces and the normal force that acts on every body is the gravity the gravitational force every body experience gravity so uh, but there are other forces that act on a body for example the attention tensile forces that tries to pull the body increasing its length there are compressive forces that tries to pull shorten the body and there are also shear stress uh, shear forces that try to distort the shape for example if we have a pillow like this if we apply force to compress this is compressive forces if we are pulling it and it becomes longer those are tensile tensile forces but if we are trying to change the shape it those are shear forces yeah.